And I could feel my brain getting hydrated. I could just feel the hydration. It's a really weird sensation. My energy levels were improved. And I thought I was really healthy before. You know? So I don't know, this has all happened to me uh, in that time. So, and from a pure physiological viewpoint, I think that everything he's going to tell you tonight is pretty solid. I know that is very, very solid stuff. Um, and I had a long time to talk to him this afternoon. And I can tell you now, this is, from this man's going to get some information. Uh, you're not going to get anywhere else in the world. I think that something was happening to your hair. Yeah, my hair, my girls, my office girls, you know, my receptionist started to notice my hair was changing colour. <laughs> <laughs> they, they said, you know, one of them just said to me, well, they said, oh, my hair's changing a bit colour, you know. And I don't know if it's true or not. But then I mentioned it to a few people, and a couple of other people said, yeah, I think your hair's changing colour. Uh, so I think my hair has gone a little darker. It's not as grey. I used to have really silver. Right here, like Malcolm, but ah, one's got a little, little darker. But I, I don't know that that's true or not, I'm just not sure. All these other things I mentioned, though, are, are real. And you could say, well, it's all placebo effect, you know, but um, there's a, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the one thing that's definitely, I had to separate keratosis on my thyroid for about 40 years. And I've been trying to pick it up for 40 years, it just kept growing, and you know, pick it up, grow, pick it up, grow. It's just stripped off, it's just gone. And I don't know what, it's just gone. I haven't had to separate keratosis anymore. That can't be placebo effect. There's got to be something going on. I've only been drinking this for five weeks. So Sam's been drinking it for how many years? 17 years. No, I haven't given up the line. I only drink Italian wine, I won't drink Australian wine. How many years have you been drinking? 17 years. 17 years, so there you go. But he knows a lot more, I know very little bit. But I'm very impressed with him this afternoon. And I'll introduce Sam in the same way. Uh, thank you, Jerry. I am 72 years old. Started drinking water when I was uh, 55. The, I'm from Korea. Went to the United States. 1951 at the age of uh, 20. I'm an engineer, scientist, inventor. I'm not a doctor <laughs> and I'm not a biologist. The 17 years ago when I was suffering high blood pressure, 55 years old is generally the beginning of the adult degenerative diseases. That, uh, Jerry will tell you that. That's the kind of patients that he sees. Uh, right at the beginning of the uh, adult degenerative diseases. I was suffering high blood pressure, tendency of diabetes, my ears ring, and if I open my mouth too big, I couldn't close it. <laughs> Uh, dark spots on my legs, poor blood circulation. That was the day that somebody introduced me a water ionizer. It is uh, not quite modern like what you are seeing. It was like a fish tank, two chambers with a membrane in between and the one side has a negative electrode, the other side has a positive electrode. You put a gallon each and turn the water on. In 20 minutes, one side becomes alkaline water, the other side becomes acid water. And I was told, just drink alkaline water. The person who introduced me that uh, machine is a registered nurse. And she says she doesn't know why, but many people, their, their blood pressure went down walking. That was the primary reason why I bought that machine. And I didn't like the idea of well, you have to take this uh, blood pressure pill for the rest of your life. Uh, that, that's, it's not really a pleasant thought, uh, especially knowing they all have side effects. Well, I drank that water religiously, five times a day. 10 ounce water in the morning, before meals, and in the evening. Surprising things happened. Two weeks later, my blood pressure was getting quite low. So I reduced my blood pressure pill to half. Two more weeks later, to quarter. And two more weeks, total six weeks, I cut my blood pressure pill. 
It was uh, miraculous to me. I was very happy in the beginning. Then I began to worry. Because I remember the doctor told me, if you stop taking this pill just because you're feeling better, one of these days blood pressure will shoot way up and you may be carried into emergency room. That's, <laughs> to me that was a scare tactic. But anyway, I wanted to know when this pressure may go up. So I was measuring my blood pressure in the morning and the evening, every day. And I said to myself, I can't live like this. And furthermore, I thought, could be psychological, and it could be short-term phenomenon, or it could do some long-term side effect damage. When you don't know why, I, as a scientist, all kinds of uh, thoughts come through your mind. I said, I gotta start, find out why did my blood pressure go down. Most of the literature available was uh, from Korea and from Japan. This is where they developed this machine, Alkaline water machine. Fortunately, I read the Korean and the Japanese and read the paper. Then I read the macrobiotic diet paper. Anything to do with the acid and alkaline, I gotta grab hold of it and try to find out why did my blood pressure go down. The result of my research is uh, never mind my blood pressure. That's nothing. I discovered actually how people get old. Why we get old. And the real good news was you can reverse it. When you really find out how people get old, then you can reverse it. That's when I wrote my book, Reverse Aging. So the first thing I studied was uh, what is food. We have to eat food to live. But it's the food that creates waste product after it burns with oxygen, giving us the energy. After that is a waste product. And they're all acidic. So I started going to the elements of the food and Interesting discovery is 98% of our food is uh, carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen. Nitrogen is in the protein and the rest of them are in carbohydrate and the fat and, and fiber. They all produce energy after you burn it with oxygen and they all produce acidic waste products. And the remaining 2% is uh, inorganic mineral. Alkaline minerals, acid minerals, uh, people talk about this is alkaline food or acid food. It's, we're talking about the 2%. The 98% all produces acidic waste. There is no alkaline food or any food that does not create acidic waste. Because of 98% is. Carbon creates carbonic acid, cholesterol, fatty acid. Cholesterol. Those are the acid waste from the carbon. Nitrogen gives uh, uric acid and the nitro oxide and ammonia. And uh, body tries its best to get rid of the waste. Because these uh, leftovers don't belong to our body. It doesn't do anything. First channel is urine. Most of our waste product, I'm talking about waste product created in the cells. That's why I don't talk of, I'm not addressing the feces. Just the cell, waste product that created in the cell Biggest uh, exhaust the system is uh, urine. You know urine is acid. And uh, ammonia, all those things come from. Perspiration. We sweat out the acid. It's good thing that we sweat the acid out because for that our skin is acid. And skin acid kills 95% of the bacteria virus and bacteria, when it comes to contact with your skin, it gets killed. 
Even the AIDS virus is uh, killed by skin acid. That's the reason why you cannot catch AIDS through skin contact. But before you get, the skin kills it. That's one way that God designed the human body to protect us. As an engineer, one of the most amazing things is how the kind of engineering went in in designing human body. As an engineer, I was amazed how this machine body is such a survival machine. And the third method is breathing carbon dioxide out. This is the front line of uh, the deacidification process. Blood must be very slightly alkaline and maintain very narrow range of a pH. Anything goes wrong, first thing that the lungs do is they remove carbon dioxide out. So the carbonic acid becomes H2O to neutralize that. These are the three primary channels where cell-created acidic waste gets out of our body. Our body tries its best to get rid of all these acids. Unfortunately, we cannot get rid of 100%. There are some leftovers. What do you do with that leftovers if you can't get rid of it? Some, you have to store some place in your body. The form of the waste product we store in our body is they store in solid form, not in the liquid form. If they remained in the liquid form, it would lower your body pH too low and you'll be dead. Your body fluid and the blood fluid has to be slightly alkaline. But you keep producing acidic waste. So body is clever. Again, it's a survival mechanism. Converts liquid acid to solid acid. When it comes out of a cell, it is liquid. But by the time we store it, it is in a solid form. Cholesterol. Fatty acid. These are, if you look at the chemical formula for cholesterol and fatty acid, uh, it describes in my book. I went through it and wrote down all the chemical formula for that. They are incompletely burnt carbohydrate. If you eat carbohydrate, that is uh, rice, noodle, bread, uh, pasta, and don't exercise. That means you don't burn it completely. They become cholesterol, fatty acid, lactic acid, Incomplete burnt means you can burn some more. So that when you don't have any food coming in, you pull that out and burn and get some more energy out. That's the, the main purpose. These days, we don't have that kind of opportunity to burn more. Unless you're going into fasting. Then, kind of food that we eat, like uh, eggs, has uh, sulfur in it. You know, the egg yolk, they say it's a rotten, rotten egg smell, that's the sulfur smell. Or rice and Coca Cola has a uh, phosphorus in it. As I said, the nitrogen is in protein. They create nitroxide, uric acid, Sulfuric acid, phosphoric acid, these are poisonous acid. If you let it alone, it damages your body. So they look for calcium, anything alkaline mineral, anything to neutralize that. If you don't have enough calcium, alkaline mineral in your diet, they rub calcium out of your skeleton. That's what, the, that's what this osteoporosis is all about. They come out, combine with this uh, poisonous acid, becomes uric acid, becomes urate. Phosphoric acid becomes phosphate, means uh, phosphoric acid plus calcium. Sulfuric acid plus cal calcium is uh, sulfate. These, unfortunately, calcium 
is a solidifying, precipitating mineral. So when it combines with the calcium, it becomes a solid. A kidney stone is the combination of a phosphoric acid and a uric acid. And when they combine, they form kidney stones. Some people thought that kidney stone is caused by too much calcium. It's true there is a calcium in there, but calcium is not the cause of it. The acid is the cause of it. In order to save our lives, our body grabs calcium to put it in there. It's not an alkaline crystal. It is an acid crystal. The proof is, if it were alkaline crystal, it would dissolve in urine, which is acid. Because it's an acid crystal, it doesn't dissolve in And that's why it gives you pain. The plaques are those urates and phosphates plus cholesterol. They get mixed together and cause nice plaques. Uric acid. Uric acid is, uh, you know, the cause for gout. Uric acid. Before, if it's formed in an area where calcium can get there easily, they become urate. But if it's formed in a joint in your foot where calcium doesn't have any chance to get there, before calcium gets there, it crystallizes itself. So uric acid is a shiny, just like a glass. If they go in between your joint, you have pain. That is, uh, everybody who had experience with the uh, gout will tell you. And these, the acid is nothing wrong unless acid coagulates the blood and causing our blood circulation to go bad. This is a major problem of our aging. Blood circulation gets poor. The, the fact that acid coagulates blood is a really a life-saving property of a blood. When you have a cut, <coughs> blood comes out, meets oxygen in the atmosphere, forms a strong acid. Then it forms a scab. Because of this property, solidifies it, stops bleeding. This is how God designed our body saving from bleeding to death when you have a cut. But because of the life-saving property, as you start to accumulate acid in your body, blood gets thick, blood circulation gets poor, then all kinds of disease takes place depending upon where you store that acidic waste. Everybody stores different, different favorite places. If you accumulate near your pancreas, now this is a lot of men generally start to build up here. The woman a little below. That's what, that's what causes uh, blood circulation around the pancreas gets poor. If you don't have enough blood circulation, the pancreas cannot create enough insulin. Then you have uh, diabetes. All the different diseases, how acid the affects that, creates that, it's in my book. The heart diseases. When you start to have uh, plaques and the debris formed in the blood coming out of artery, Bodies are afraid that they're floating around, we can clog up some critical capillaries leading to important part of the brain. So they try to paste on your artery coming out to save you. Little by little, the pasting function increases and you have clogged artery, bypass operations. And uh, cancer, cancer cells are acidic while healthy cells are alkaline. I don't know all the mechanism of cancer cells, but I do know cancer cells are acidic. And uh, stroke, high blood pressure, if it becomes too much acid, oxygen content of the blood gets low. If oxygen content gets low, heart must pump stronger, more, to supply necessary oxygen. Diabetes, I already explained. Acid reflux kidney problems, osteoporosis, gout. These are the 
beginnings of all the adult degenerative diseases as you accumulate acid. So what I discovered is uh, aging is nothing but the result of acid accumulation. So scientifically, mathematically speaking, plus acid is aging, the minus acid is uh, reverse age. <laughs> That's, I'm a scientist, uh, I just applied my formula, plus. <laughs> <laughs> so reduction of acid is to stay young and healthy, which I call the reverse. This, when I discovered this, I found out why my drinking alkaline water lowered my blood pressure, not just blood pressure, so many other things in my body. I was really happy. Why didn't we know this kind of simple facts until the end of the 20th century? That, that was my biggest question in those days. It's so simple once you understand it. Now how, then the, the goal is to reduce acid. Now how do we reduce acid? There's a hard and less effective way and the easy and the more effective way. When you think of uh, health, we think of a diet. Something wrong with the diet. Exercise. Liposuction. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get the acid out, out of your body. Diet is the most difficult subject. How difficult? There are many experts in diet. They don't agree with each other. The, in the U.S., the Department of Agriculture conducted a debate on ABC television network. They called all the diet experts. Dr. Atkins was there. He was still alive then. And the surgeons were there. The vegetarian diet people were there. All kinds of doctors were there. They couldn't agree what is the best diet. They agreed on two things. One, all, most Americans are overweight. That, <laughs> that was agreement number one. Second agreement is uh, agree to disagree. <laughs> the problem is uh, they all had their own personal experience of uh, their diet improving some people's health. Therefore, they could not change their mind. They did not, could not see the overall picture of what's going on. They were just concentrating on what they were seeing. After I saw that TV program, I remember the story, Elephant and the Six Blind Men. I don't know whether you have heard of the uh, Elephant and the Six Blind Men. And the little country town, the circus came in and they never saw elephant before. And when they saw elephant, elephant became talk of town. Everybody talked about elephant. The blind man said, we gotta go and see, I don't know what they're talking about. So. They were led to see the elephant, six blind men. After they saw the elephant, <laughs> they tried to discuss about their experience and to see what an elephant is. Somebody said, elephant is a concrete column. You can see where he touched it. <laughs> concrete walls. No, 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 elephant is a floppy sheet. <laughs> No, it was a flexible hose. <laughs> no hard substance. Or shaped like a whip. Everybody had a personal experience. Therefore, they could not change their mind. They couldn't agree what elephant was. The important thing is you have to let go of your personal experience and try to see the bigger picture, the overall picture. Diet has a major risk, element of risk. That is, you can create nutritional deficiency. I felt like a nutritional deficiency means in some Africa where they don't have anything to eat, something like that. No, no, this is happening in an affluent society, especially among the health conscious people. They have certain personal experiences, and uh, if, you, if you follow all these diet experts' advices and uh, don't eat anything that they tell you, don't eat, you'll starve to death. And the nutritional deficiency, there is no medicine for that. You have to eat. 
And somebody said, oh, I have a food supplement. I don't know how they come to that conclusion, but food supplement, one formula fits all. I don't believe that. I don't know what you are eating, what you are not eating. How can I come up with the one formula fits all food supplements? The risk is uh, nutritional deficiency. Exercise is another hard, very hard discipline to go through. I don't know why, how in Australia, in America, when they say exercise is push to the limit. No pain, no gain. Weight lift. They take certain risk. First of all, when you over-exercise like that, you create lactic acid. Much more acidic problem. Some, I know a friend of mine loved to dance. About 30 minutes into dancing, she has to stop because uh, exercise induced asthma. The lactic acid causes asthma and she has to stop, stop dancing. And if your blood vessels have a lot of plaques and the debris floating around, during exercise, your blood pressure is extremely high. So high that your blood pressure measuring device cannot read. That's why nobody measures blood pressure during exercise. You have to relax, then measure blood pressure. Because they have limited ranges. So during exercise, blood pressure could be very high. And if you have this floating debris in your blood vessels, they could go in and clog up capillary leading to critical part of your brain, then you have a stroke. You hear a lot of cases of stroke during exercise. It's caused because of that. That's the risk. Lactic acid. I won't buy the risk for liposuction. <laughs> Easy and the more effective way is the Japanese way. 50 years ago, Japanese invented this water ionizer. Their patent ran out, and that's why now everybody's making the water ionizers. Electrically splitting water, alkaline and acid water. Japanese is the longest living. I'm not saying that this is the only reason why they live long. See, after the World War II, everybody else is spending their money. The Japanese are making a lot of money with the Toyotas and the Panasonics. <laughs> and uh, they were not allowed to spend any money for military. So all that money went into health research. If you look at macrobiotic diet, and magnetic devices, and alkaline devices, they all come from Japan. <laughs> That's why, because they have been doing this. It's Japanese way is drinking alkaline water. Because that's how I reversed my high blood pressure. And my goal was, why did drinking alkaline water help me? And I found out that it's simple, because acid caused, acid caused my high blood pressure. Therefore, alkaline water neutralizes acid. The Japanese have a municipal thing? Do they have it in towns, or is it always on home use? It's, it's always on home use. The, the reason is this. Amount of water that we consume is a very small part of the water that I get from the municipal. I would be first to object if a government uses my tax money to alkalize all the water so that people wash a car with it and take a bath with it with alkaline water. That's a waste. I, w I would not go for that. It's individual responsibility. <laughs> so the question is how do we make alkaline water? Water ionizer, that's what you're familiar with. Ian sells here, and uh, Japanese, now Koreans make it, now I understand even Chinese make the water ionizer. Then, what I figured out was, I was drinking 10 ounce glass of water, pH 10, five times a day. So one of these, those days, I calculated how many H2O is in that 10 ounce glass of water. I had a lucky break. Calculation shows one with 25 zeros afterwards. If you can count that kind of number, that's the approximate number of H2O molecule in 10 ounce glass of water. If a pH is a 10, then number of OH minus iron in that water is one with 21 zeros. It's about one ten thousandth. That's pH 10 water. People talk about, oh, 
the, my machine makes a microstructure the alkaline water and the surface tension is high or uh, uh, oxygen reduction potential or P is uh, greater but that's not the important thing what I found out is it's number of OH minus ion going into your body once it goes in there equal number of H plus ion will be neutralized that many number and H plus and OH minus ion, when they meet, they become H2O. That was, that's what we mean by neutralizing the acid. Could I get the tap water about halfway full? Tap water? Tap water. Don't ionize it. Just give me plain tap water. I noticed that at Brisbane and here, tap water has a pH around the 8. I'm going to put only one drop because this is not quite 10 ounces, okay? Just one drop. Purple color. Now I'm going to play some trick here. You see, carbon dioxide is an acid body throws it off, right? I'm going to blow my carbon dioxide into this water and change this alkaline water into acid water. Do you believe that? See, carbon dioxide is uh, what we throw out, expel from our body, because it, it's a waste product. When you drink a Coca-Cola or any soft drink, you are drinking your own body excrete. <laughs> so one day at the trade show, I told the people, drinking Coca-Cola is like drinking your own urine. <laughs> and somebody said, but if it tastes like a Coca-Cola, <laughs> well, everybody cracked up. <laughs> I, try, I tried to demonstrate this to the high school students, not to drink soft drinks. <laughs> but then somehow some people drink their urine and some people are supposed to have some, some property. That's what they say. <laughs> I wouldn't drink, <laughs> even if it tastes like a Coca-Cola. <laughs> When I first wrote Reverse Aging, I do most of the sales of uh, my lecture as well as everything else through my books. I wrote the book 1990, no publisher will publish. So I had to publish myself. So I read the self-publishing manual of the book. They say, don't you ever publish your own book with your own name. People don't buy. <laughs> Make up any fictitious name of a publishing company and you use that. So I picked JSP Publishing, if you look at it. Where does the JSP come from? My three kids initials, <laughs> Jeannie, Steve, and Peter. <laughs> And uh, looked around for print shop, about 60 miles away from my house, there was a reasonable print shop. And the guy says, you have to print at least a thousand copies to make it worthwhile, so that the reasonable price for each copy. So I printed a thousand copies. I brought back a thousand copies, put it in the garage, and they looked at it and said, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> I sent some letters out to my friends, I sold about 20. Copies. <laughs> then the ball started rolling. They read it, 
they, of course these friends who bought it, they read it, they bought some more to give their friends, and they recommended strictly by word of mouth. Now it's over 80,000 copies uh, in circulation. What's more gratifying to me is uh, some people after they read my book called me up and says, uh, I would like to translate this into my own language so that my countrymen can also have this information. So with the volunteer translation, so I can't afford to pay them for this translation. With the volunteer translations, I have now books in Polish, Chinese, Spanish, Japanese, Korean is in final editing stage, and the German translation just finished when, before I came to Australia. I'm, I got the news that he finished translating into German. To me, sharing this information to the world is like a passion to me. That's why I came here. Do you know, um, is there anywhere in nature where you can find alkaline water? There are some natural alkaline uh, dug up. But they also are usually silica based. They are not necessarily the the alkaline mineral based. Therefore, the initial pH effect is there, but long term, uh, the benefit of alkaline mineral in your body isn't there. The coral calcium has, uh, if you add that into water, it gives you alkaline water too. Coral calcium, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Coral calcium. Okinawa, uh, near the Okinawa, they dig the coral calcium and the, you put that in water, water becomes alkaline. The concern with the coral calcium is uh, they have all kinds of other heavy metals in the natural coral calcium. Uh, we don't know the long range, long term effect of that yet. And uh, about baking soda? Baking soda yeah. is a base, yeah. but if you drink Baking soda, adding alkaline mineral to water to make water alkaline is nothing new. But it's the selection of the minerals and the ratio of the minerals is critical. If you take baking soda, you will get alkaline effect, but in the long range, you will be increasing sodium contents in your body without potassium contents. That's the reason why we don't recommend. Alkaline water made by the water ionizer. Water ionizer does not put any minerals in. Whatever comes with the water company electrically splits into alkaline side and the acid side. The alkaline side is predominantly calcium based. Now I have an academic paper, the University of Prof San Francisco, uh, California, has published a paper that Human bodies, genetically, from eons ago, was made to eat more potassium and less sodium. Then, now we are all eating more sodium and less potassium. That's the reason why we age. This is uh, Professor Linda Frasero recent paper. I brought a copy and gave it to you and said, if anybody really wants it, ask him <laughs> to make a copy. The, in our body, we accumulate acid waste. Some of them are, for instance, if you have the sulfuric acid. Now that's too poisonous. So they grab calcium to make it sulfate. But it's a solid. It builds up in the, the body. Uric acid, phosphoric acid, urate and phosphate combined it becomes kidney stones. All those stones that we accumulate in our body is something to do with the calcium. If I want to eliminate, take the calcium out and give it back to the bone and combine with another mineral, calcium cannot kick calcium out. But sodium or potassium can kick calcium out. You know, the water softener is the water with too much calcium. They use a salt, sodium salt, to kick calcium out. The same principle in terms of a reduction of a kidney stones and many the solidified acid crystals, acid salts, potassium works better than calcium. Calcium cannot kick calcium out.
So kidney stones, several other effects we are finding. Alkali, alkaline water is better than the ionized. Some people ask, do you use ionized? Yes, I use ionized. I buy, I have an ionizer. As a matter of fact, we have a three. <laughs> at home and the office and we have two at home. I get the alkaline water without any acid mineral when I use ionizer because acid mineral went the other side. When I add alkalife, I do not remove any acid mineral, I just add more alkaline. And the pH is the same, as long as the pH is the same, number of hydroxyl ion is still the same, doesn't seem to matter. But I get, the ben I add then alkalife to that in ionized water, so that I have acid-free alkaline water with four minerals, potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium. And I have a stronger mineral as well. This is to maintain the balance. We are finding out that if you use alkalife, because it releases calcium, out of these waste products that you have. You have more calcium than magnesium. Just like the potassium and sodium has to maintain certain ratio, the calcium and the magnesium should maintain certain ratio. So we're finding some people having to take some supplement of magnesium because you have too much calcium versus magnesium. These are still ongoing research. But the biggest question, the biggest question is, uh, hey, you drink, see, you say you drink alkaline water, alkaline water is good for you, but your stomach is acid. So when you drink alkaline water, your stomach is going to neutralize that alkaline water. Your body doesn't see any benefit of alkalinity. That has been the biggest concern when I first came up with this. Here is the answer to the <laughs> question. Alkaline water and the stomach acid. As a matter of fact, the, if you go into my website and uh, see article number three that talks about this. When we drink alkaline water, stomach neutralizes that. The total stomach pH goes up. Stomach pH usually is 4.5. Uh, alkaline we're drinking is pH 10. When they mix, stomach pH resultant pH is uh, too high. That forces the stomach to make more hydrochloric acid. Stomach is not happy unless pH is 4.5. Maybe time delayed reactions, but still they wind up producing hydrochloric acid to bring it down to pH 4.5. How do they make hydrochloric acid? The people who know this are not MDs. MDs do not study this. Pathologists do. Pathology 101 teaches this. How stomach makes hydrochloric acid. In our human cell, H2O, water is there. CO2, carbon dioxide is there. NaCl, this is salt. Inside the cell is more potassium. Let's see. Potassium and sodium, they behave very similar, but the potassium goes inside the cell and the sodium goes extra, exterior to the cells. And that balance is very important to control the pumping effect of the cell. Nutrients go in and the waste products come out. All these functions, they are controlled by the potassium and the sodium pump effect. As a matter of fact, last year's Nobel Peace Prize was specifically for this, uh, the pumping effect of the cells. 1H from H2O, Cl from NaCl, this could be KCl, potassium chloride, doesn't matter, becomes HCl. The leftover is uh, NaHCO3, three O's. That's sodium bicarbonate, or could be potassium bicarbonate. This goes into the stomach. This is the alkaline buffer that goes into the bloodstream. As a result of the fact that you drank alkaline water. The more alkaline water you drink, 
the more hydrochloric acid has to be produced and the more alkaline buffer goes into your bloodstream. So the stomach goes back to acid, but your blood gained alkaline buffer. Pathologists know that, but the uh, most MDs, they are not taught the subject in their, in their classes. Can there be excess alkalinity in the blood? The happy news is, if you drink too much alkaline water, your urine gets alkaline. In other words, the body dumps it. They don't know where to store it. Now, if an alkaline mineral were sent in with the food, alkaline food that is, until they go into the cell and metabolize, they do not show alkaline effect. So, not knowing that you could overdose alkalinity into the cell, but in the bloodstream, if it gets too much alkaline, kidney dumps. As a proof, your urine becomes alkaline, not urine should be acid because we dump acid. We also found some another side effects. When you do that, if you have a kidney infection, the bacteria for the kidney infection, they are the one that loves acidic environment. That's why they don't die and they survive. But they cannot survive in alkaline environment. When you flush your kidney with too much alkaline and kidney urine becomes alkaline, you kill kidney infection bacteria. That's happy side effects. When the uh, as blood is coupling from the receiving of the blood circulation that is passed through, does it get into the lymphatic system as well? Pardon? Does it get into the, the alkaline, you know, the blood system? Uh, after the uh, stomach? Yeah, blood, it goes into the blood system. Blood system. system. Does the lymph system benefit from it as well? Or? The, the when you have alkalinity in the blood, that blood travels all throughout your body. Yeah, therefore, exactly what mechanism it goes to the lymph system, I don't know. <laughs> but you are getting benefit of alkalinity. When it's too much, kidney dumps it. So alkaline water is not destroyed by stomach acid. This is uh, our biggest objection some people have. Some people say, the, Alkaline water, you drink alkaline water, doesn't do anything because the, the, uh, your stomach is acid. The, the water does it, uh, once it travels down through the small intestine, any excess water, do we lose water through the, uh, through the bowel? Because the lower part of the, um, the, uh, the bowel should be acidic. Uh, is there any effect of overflow to alkaline through into the bowel? The, Body controls its own uh, mechanism, what part of the body should be alkaline, what part of the body should be acid. Like a stomach has to be pH 4.5, the pancreas has to be pH of 8.5. All these things are automatic mechanism that body controls the as needed basis, whatever, whatever it is. It gradually our function decreases because we have built up over acid so that we do not have blood circulation properly. See, the best definition of health is ease of flow. When things flow easy, then you have good health. When things do not flow easy, then there is some place that gets clogged up. You need the pipe plumber to clean that up. The alkaline water neutralizes acid. There are several reasons why ease of flow is not there. The main one is acid. Acid coagulates blood. So another one is close-mindedness. That also. <laughs> and uh, sitting on the airplane too long also <laughs> prevents. Or the cold temperature also slows down the flow. What is the pain? Pain is a concentration of acid someplace so that when, so suppose when you pull the muscle in the back, bang, adrenaline burnt a lot of calories, there is a sudden buildup of acidic waste pool. All the capillaries around that gets clogged up because acid. It's a high temperature when you first burn it. 
at the high temperature, all the capillaries got clogged up. Then, because clogged up, blood cannot go in, blood circulation is blocked, the temperature starts to go down. If you take a thermograph of a uh, body, and the painful area always comes out to be lower temperature than the rest of the body. And uh, in order to re reinstate the flow, you have to deep heat that area. For that, I don't have time, but out the far infrared heater happens to be right frequency to heat water. And it goes in deep. We have a far infrared uh, heating pad designed for pain relief. When, when it heats that area, clogged up capillary heat expansion takes place, then that spot is hotter than the rest of the body. Therefore, blood does, uh, body doesn't like that. So blood goes in and out to try to even the temperature. In doing so, they bring the toxins out. That's, that's how they relieve pain. That is, if you happen to build up acidic waste where nerve ending is, so that you feel the pain. If you happen to build that up where there is no nerve endings, you don't know. You know, we have so many parts in our body where there is no nerve endings. People walk around with the surgical tools in their stomach. <laughs> they have no idea because there is no nerve endings. Now, when those things develop to such a magnitude that you feel something, even when there is no nerve ending, usually it's too late. And this is why you want to have early detection, do whatever, whatever you want to do to eliminate that. This, that's more dangerous, the fact that there is a buildup of acid you don't know. So if you are always drinking alkaline water, then you insure, you, that's the insurance. If, even if there is one, you will get rid of it. Um, I just went to a guy in Leonard's Head in Natura, and he does live blood analysis. And I got to see in my blood a big acid crystal that was going through it. And mums had like, bought like a ball of string with acid, a big acid crystal with just his arms going throughout the whole blood cells and stuff. And then after, you know, doing a diet and an anti candida diet for three weeks and yada yada, they went back and acid was gone and stuff. But that would be a way for people to, um, to have a look at their own blood and drink that one water and then have a look and see. Correct. Because uh, after you see it on the screen, I mean, you've got to do something about it. Like, so my mum's blood is just a nightmare. So when she had a look, she said if she got told that and never got to see it, she wouldn't have. Yeah, I, I'm glad you've had the means to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. If you, what you don't know, they say what you don't know can't hurt you, but that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. The, uh, there are many. Uh, the research I've done is uh, over like 14, 15 years. I'm trying to condense that in less than an hour. It's not a possible thing, but I will entertain some questions. And uh, if you don't have questions, I have a few other subjects that I could cover. But right at this point, uh, the, this is the 